and I'm excited. But if you had to explain why the Mariners are just playing such good baseball right now and that this has they've kind of turned the corner in this way, how would you do it, Danny? It's been the pitching. I it, it's the simple answer is pitching. They've had since June first, they've had the best ERA in baseball. Now before yeah. June, it was the New York Yankees. Yeah. You see- Yankees have been able to accomplish with that once upon a time to a best team or ERA. The mm-hmm. Mariners are now reaping those same benefits. Um, Chris Flexen really stumbled out of the gates. He's kind of regained his 2021 shape. Chris Flexen is not a dominant starter. I'm not trying to make that argument here, but he's a formidable number four starter in that rotation. Mm-hmm. Logan Gilbert's been fantastic all year round. Uh, Robbie Ray is Cy Young, Robbie Ray. Mm-hmm. Who- He's been one of the best pitchers in the American League. He's got a sub two ERA over his past like eight starts. Um, there were, so their rotation's been good. Their bullpen was really shaky earlier. Right. On. They had a tw- uh, they were in the bottom ten in Major League Baseball through the first month and a half of the season. Their bullpen ERA. Since then, they've been in the top ten. So their bullpen mm-hmm. finally is starting to find their roles now. And then the offense too, guys like a. Eugenio Suarez. He's hitting some balls that are going a long ways. He's kind of looking like his 2019 self. And that's to go along with complimenting guys like you just mentioned, Julio Rodriguez, Ty France, your all-star type players. And this is what really excites me is, yes, they're going to have to make some moves at the deadline. I couldn't agree with you more. But they're also going to get Mitch Hanniger back. Right. This, I, I expected to get Mitch Hanniger back. This is a guy that was their team leader last year, him and Kyle Seeger in the clubhouse. He's also a guy that hit 40 home runs, nearly a hundred RBIs last season. So that's another bat they're going to add to your lineup. You mentioned starting pitching and just pitching depth in general. There's not a lot of big ticket items, at least Mm -hmm. in years past during, as we approach this deadline, but the biggest tickets that will be available are likely going to be Luis Castillo, Frankie Montas, two big time starting pitchers. So that could make things interesting. Frankie's the one who makes the most sense to me. And I don't think he'll cost nearly as much as what Luis Castillo would probably cat. Cause I don't think the reds are any rush. I think they're like, if there's not a good offer, we're not just moving him to move him. Um, Cause he seems okay there and they're okay with that. So if they, you don't blow them away with a Dodgers like offer, that's why the Dodgers popped up. It's like the Dodgers have the farm. If they really want Luis Castillo, they can go get Luis Castillo. But if you're the Mariners, you have to be really careful <laughs> with this. And it's like, do you include Jared clinic? in any of this stuff like that's one where you're like mm, do we have to just <laughs> bite the bullet there where it's like he might just need to go somewhere else like maybe and that's someone who the a's would love to take a flyer on like they just did that with uh christian pache like billy bean is that kind of guy where they're going to keep throwing darts at the wall with these young guys and they're like eventually these guys are going to hit and if there's one thing people are dunking on the a's they've been extremely successful the last 10 years. Like you go through this, the A's, this is all new and people who are laughing and dancing on their grave right now. And I'm like, the A's are going to be bounce back. Like it makes no sense. And I understand when you look at the farm and you look at this major league roster right now, you're like, Oh, this is going to be horrific for the next five to 10 years. That's not, that's never been the case uh, under the Billy Bean era. It's literally never been the case. So it, no, that's the problem is that Billy, yeah. Billy Bean proves to their ownership group that they don't have to spend money. They don't right. have to take the bathrooms in the Coliseum. They don't have, they, they're okay with sewage problems at the Coliseum because mm-hmm. they games regardless of how much money they spend on their on their roster every single yeah. week. That's the problem. Like that's the big issue here. They up the ticket prices in the Coliseum this year for no reason at all <laughs> other than because they can't. And John Fisher, their owner does not care about his fans. Like that's evident. So that's the problem is Oakland is they continue to win games not this year, but they continue to win games and, and continue to have that quick one, two year rebuilds or back in contention, despite not spending money at all, not taking care of their fans at all. Would you include clinic in a Montes trade? It's tough. You have to, you have to consider your outfield depth. I think mm-hmm. Mel is obviously what the Seattle Mariners would rather offer than he's hitting right now. Uh, what was that? Sorry. Yeah. He's hitting right now. I mean, he's someone like he's still what, how old is he? Yeah. He's only 24. Right, right. I think he's more expendable than Kellenic because I hmm. still think Kellen just won a one player of the week last week in the PCL. Like the dude, hmm. really, what they wanted him to work on was his strikeout rate and his walk rate, which is obviously hmm. there's uh, scouts are putting more and more weight on those numbers. Like that's what hmm. people see at the big league level. So 
I mean, last year, Kellen last year during the last month of the season, he had like seven home runs, if I remember correctly. Like, he was actually mm -hmm. hitting the ball well. I'm not trying to say that Kellen there yet, but I still think that people see that potential in him. And not to mention, when you'd make that big of a trade, uh, mm -hmm. that they did with, it was Edwin Diaz, Robinson Cano over to the New York Mets. When you make that big of a trade, you're trying to hold on to that as long as you possibly can. So it wouldn't surprise me, but at the same time, I don't think Luis Castillo or Frankie Montas, either of those guys, in my opinion, I don't think either of them are worth a Jared Kalenic. Not, not yet. Hmm. What's interesting too is this is legit where they have a plus 36 run differential. That's higher than Toronto, higher than Tampa, higher than Minnesota. I mean, Houston and New York is just preposterous, especially New York. But I mean, they have the third best run differential in the AL. Like, and this all happened in a little over a month span. Like everything flipped. And I I don't know. Like, what would you do though if you're Depoto? Would you do anything to or or are you looking at it as like, hey? This group is fine. Like you said, Hanniger's coming back. We can just roll this back and we're fine. Or do you go, you know, as great as Gilbert has been, he's still 25. Flexen's 27. Robbie Ray's our ace at 30. But like, I need another veteran arm if we're going to make the playoffs and we're going to get out of round one. Like, I need somebody else in this rotation. It can't just be those three leading the charge. As great as they've been, like, I would feel better about somebody else like a Montas or something. That's yeah, funny. Obviously, when the season started, Mariners fans are just, just play the playoffs, please. Mm. And then 14-game win streak, now Mariners fans are like, World Series, baby. <laughs> I need to understand that right now, the Mariners just need to make it in the postseason. Whatever happens after that happens. But this team should not be building a team, in my opinion, to try and build a World Series roster. When you consider mm. youth you still have on this team. This team is built to win for a couple more years. I don't think you go mm. all in. This year, trade Jared Klinik, trade George Kirby. By no means trade George Kirby. Don't mm. trade your potential guys that you could be using on your roster in the next year or two um, to make a World Series run. I think this team has shown that they're good enough to put themselves in a playoff position. Uh, the acquisition of Carlos Santana is a perfect example. You didn't have to give up. My, in fact, they all, all they had to give up was cash. Right. Uh, Carlos Santana, and he's been fantastic for him. Mm. Like I before you're going to have Mitch Hanniger coming back. I think if you're Seattle, you kind of do – I would like them to make more moves than they did last year. Last year, they got rid of Kendall Grayman. They brought in Abraham Toro. Wasn't a huge fan of that. But what you can always do if you're trying to be a team, trying to make the postseason, always build bullpen. You can never have enough bullpen arms, and you can always add depth. If somebody goes down to injury, you have somebody right there to back them up. Uh, instead of Dylan Moore, who's hitting about one a buck ninety right now, Maybe you add um, uh, a Tony Kemp from the A's or something, mm. some type of player like that. Like you always want depth. You always want bullpen arms. And if you want to throw a Frankie Montas in the bullpen, maybe make a deal there. Mm. That's you because that gives you that, kind of that that uh, maybe a, a long relief type guy. It just kind of depend. Or maybe you put Montas in the bull, um, excuse me in the rotation. You bump Chris Flex into the uh, bullpen. I don't know. But, regardless at, you just want like to speak to your point like diversity you want depth to be able to do different stuff if need be add some lefty bullpen arms um i, I don't have the list in front of me but add depth add bullpen if you want to be a postseason team that's something you can always do and it's not going to cost you your entire farm system to do it yeah well uh what will cost your entire farm system is trading for juan soto at this point uh not only your farm system oh. but your entire checkbook because $500 million is now the rumored uh, number and figure Juan Soto has in mind, which look, man, like that doesn't surprise me. Like that, good for him. Shout out to him. Um, it's also weird to think about how different the negotiations, like me as a Braves guy, um, the Ronald Acuna contract versus what Juan Soto is going to get. Like it's unbelievable how different and the disparity between the two of those guys next deal will be. I mean, Ronald's current one and Juan Soto's next contract. It it's just going to be, I mean, it was already offensive. It was one of those deals when it happened, we were like, uh, the Albies Acuna contract. You were like, this does not sit well. Like it was one of those where like, this feels unethical what's happening here where this man should be the highest paid player on this team. And this is a unbelievable bargain for the Braves on both fronts. But, um, Soto's out. And this was something that John and I had talked about. I want to pick your brain on is that like, I don't think the Nationals left a choice for Soto. 
where it didn't matter the number. And this was something when you watch the Nationals and the Braves just uh, lost today, but they won the series and the Braves have really, really beat up on the Nationals this year. And one of the things you see when you watch these games, and I'm sure if you watched every Nationals game and you're a Nationals guy, you've seen like Juan Soto is not having fun. Like none of this is fun. You can tell it's rough right now for him. And he... (laughs) 